the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. Many, if not all of you, will recognize those words as coming from the Divine Mercy Chaplet as taught to the world by St. Maria Faustina of Poland. It was my privilege during pastoral year to establish a Divine Mercy prayer group with some of the students at the Newman Center. I found that this ministry was life-giving to me not only because I had the chance to pass on this devotion, but also because I was getting to teach a young generation of Catholics how to be intercessors for the world, intercessors in particular for sinners. Tonight's reading from Exodus highlights the role of intercessor to us. I have to admit, it was an uncomfortable passage to sit with. God is portrayed as being very, very angry, and justifiably so. The people that he had just delivered out of slavery, the people he just claimed for his own, the people he just gave himself to in a very particular and passionate way, those people gave all the credit for their salvation and blessings to an inanimate object, to a golden calf. It's a scandalous sin. It's a slap in the face of that loving God. It's such an act that the God who had just delivered them, just claimed them, just gave himself to wants to wipe them out. And in this moment of anger, God tells Moses, leave me alone. He wants to sit with that anger and let that anger move him to do what he knows he can do, punish them, destroy them. But Moses knows, as any good intercessor knows, you don't leave God alone in his anger. And he speaks up right away. And he says a particular word that I think is the most important word in the whole passage. Remember. Remember, he says, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Remember them. Well, remember the promise that you made to them? That you would give them descendants as countless as the stars? As countless as the sands on the shore? Remember that, God. Remember how you said you would give them a land to keep for their own. It's a simple argument that he doesn't have to follow through because he knows God knows where he's going. Because, God, if you remember that, You can't do what you're thinking of doing. And you know what? God listens to him. It says God relents of the punishment he planned to inflict on the people. This passage then is so instructive for us as a community that comes together daily to pray. It teaches us three very important things. One, it teaches us that when we gather to pray, we gather to intercede on behalf of the world. We don't just get to pray for each other, for the people we like, the people we love, our family, all those people, of course, we should pray for. Not just for them. We have to intercede on behalf of the very worst of sinners. The people right now who are rejecting God and His gifts and breaking God's heart. We have to pray for those who died in their sin, the souls in purgatory. 
In short, we have to pray for people we may not sympathize with. We may not like. Because we know that every day there are actions just as scandalous, just as hideous happening as the act that we just heard about. Every day. So God's anger every day could be flaring up against the world. And the only thing that stands between the world and God's anger is us. Secondly, this passage teaches us how to make intercession. What am I going to say? Well, like Moses, you don't have to come up with a fantastic philosophical or theological argument of your own. You don't have to be creative. All you have to know is what God has already promised. Use God's words against Him, in short. So as Christians, we can say, remember, Lord, when you said you didn't come for the righteous, you came for sinners? And remember, Lord, at the end of that parable where you said there's more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than there is over the whole communion of saints who didn't need to repent. Remember, Lord, when you were on the cross and you still pray for the people who put you there? Remember? And thirdly, this passage teaches us that we can intercede, we can pray this way with confidence because we're praying to a God who indeed remembers, who cannot forget, and a God who keeps His promises. That's something that we can be confident in. That is our role as a community of religious men. So as we go forward in the year, as we proceed, Let us come to this space as a holy space, a space that stands between the great abyss of wickedness, of sinners, of ignorance, of sadness, and the throne of God, and all that goes with that, the wrath and the mercy. We come to this space to intercede and to say with confidence words like St. Faustina gave to us, For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 